Hello, hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the video. For the past year and a half, I've been developing a story called Collateral, and though I am constantly thinking about my characters and the lore around them and the world building of it, I don't really have time to make art for it. I already talked about this in part one of my video, which you should go watch after finishing this one, I quite like it. But most of the time I spend making art is either for YouTube or for school, which sadly leaves my characters and my story to be the least of my priorities. However, considering it is now December and I'm about to go on a month-long break from college, I'm hoping that with all of this extra time, I'm gonna be able to draw my characters as much as I want. And also, when this video releases, it should be my birthday! So I decided, what better way to celebrate myself, and taking a break from school, than redesigning my absolute favorite of my OCs. Unlike in part one of this video, I'm honestly not going to be completely redesigning the characters I chose, mainly because I already really like how they look. With that being said though, they do need a bit of refining, and I've also felt the need to info dump about these characters for the longest time, so that's what we're here to do today. But before we dive into the first redesign, I just want to give a quick thank you thank you to my $8 patrons, and an honorary thank you to my $2 ones. If the art and the concepts in this video intrigues you and you want to see more of my characters, or if you're just looking for another way to support me, feel free to go check my Patreon out. The link will be in the description and pinned comment. Honestly, I have plans for doing a whole Patreon overhaul pretty soon, so you might want to be there for when that happens. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the first redesign. The first character I'm going to be redesigning is probably the most well-known of my characters, and it's Lunabelle. My baby girl, my one and only, probably my favorite OC of all time right now. When I say she's well-known, I don't necessarily mean she's, like, famous, obviously. <laughs> like, I know the average person will have no clue who Lunabelle is. I just mean that whenever I get fan art, nine times out of ten, it is of this girl. And I cannot blame anyone for it, because she is, y'all, she's perfect. <laughs> Looking at this old reference sheet, though, it is outdated. Not only has my style changed, but my intentions for Lunabelle as a character and the overall art direction of my story has changed as well, so basically this just needs, like, a slight redo. A fresh coat of paint, if you will. I'll go ahead and get the things I'll be keeping the same out of the way, and that is her hair and her face, basically. Back in July, I did a Spider-Verse and Arcane style study, and I ended up drawing her in, like, a mix of those styles, and this piece is still very much what I think she looks like. Her hair color is accurate, her short plump face is accurate, and though I think her facial features might just need like a little bit more defining here and there, overall I, I think this is a pretty good render of what she looks like. For more context about her character, Lunabelle is 13 to 14 years old, so early teen, pre-teenage, and looking at old art of her, she looks young, but she doesn't look that young? <laughs> to be honest, I originally wanted her to be about 16 in the story, but I aged her down a bit because I just, I, I thought it fit more. But now, we have to talk about her outfits. Because that's the main thing we're gonna be redesigning. The first one I'm looking at is her old school uniform. A little backstory about the school she goes to. It's called Alriga Academy, a school for students aged 12 through 18. And it's a school for the arts, science, and magic. It's usually only attended by those within an upper class rank, which Luna Bell does not belong in. However, through some connections and some other things, she ends up in the school and studies directly under a young man named Cromwell, who, spoiler alert, is the other character we look at in this video. All that is to say, while I think her old uniform is effective, I just really wanted to change just like a few things about it. First off, the tie. I wanted to change it to something that is just so much more extra than it needs to be, because this school and its students are so much more extra than they need to be. I tried a bow tie for like two seconds, and I hated it, so I ended up changing it to a French jabou tie. I'm not French, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation. Which, I looked them up and jabous aren't always super frilly and super extra, but for the sake of this outfit, it is. 
I debated on what color to make it, but I ended up going with white because I just thought it fit Lunabelle's character the most. And y'all, there are so many moving parts to this story that influence the designs, and I don't want to spoil them, but I also don't want to leave y'all in the dark. I'll get a short film or a comic out eventually, don't worry about it. As for the vest, I slightly changed the shape language of it, like I replaced the old star buttons with diamonds and the vest fits more tightly to her body so it shows off like a more diamond shaped silhouette, kind of. I want her outfit to look angular yet soft at the same time and I think this new vest just works better for that purpose. I also define the way her sleeves puff up more because on the old reference, I didn't render anything at all. <laughs> like, I just left it all as line art and then the basic color she'd have so you can't really tell what's going on with them. And just being so straight up with y'all. I use this video more as an opportunity for me to work on rendering alongside doing character design. So this was kind of a two-in-one deal for me rather than just being a very bare-bones redesign. So if it seems like I'm not changing much about her design, that's why. This is just an excuse for me to make a new reference sheet. Shh, shh, shh. Don't, don't tell YouTube though. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, those are basically my changes for her uniform. As for her other outfit, here's the thing. I'm not gonna change it. I think this design is really good already, like I went really hard with it back when I originally made it, but I needed to give Luna Bell a more casual outfit because this is not casual at all. I know we're way past the sketch phase of this outfit, but y'all, <laughs> when I say I struggled coming up with an outfit for her because I, I was so determined to put Luna Bell in pants, I wanted her to wear pants for once. But after all of my failed attempts, I realized that this girl is just way too magical girl adjacent, and she can't wear pants. I mean, she could if she wanted to, but she won't. <laughs> I just think the shape language of skirts and dresses just fit her personality so well. Like, they're so fun and girly, which are both things that Lunabelle are. That, and they're just, they're a lot more fun to draw, let's be real. I tried giving her a jacket, and I tried giving her a tie, and I tried giving her pants. But I ended up just caving and giving her a more simplified version of this magical girl outfit. I don't have too much to say about this outfit, I'm gonna be completely honest. I kind of used it as an excuse to explore the casual wear of this universe more, rather than just an outfit for Lunabelle. I think this is something her mother would put her in, rather than an outfit she would choose for herself. Which reminds me, I need to develop her parents more. And I need to develop her brother more. I, lord, I have so much crap to do for this story. <laughs> Since I wanted this video to be a lot more relaxed for me, I didn't put as much effort into her face as I wanted to just because I was so done with this piece by the time I got done with the two dresses. And don't even say anything about the shoes. Don't, don't say anything. I know I need to practice drawing shoes more. I'm, I'm tired. It's my birthday. I'm taking the L for now. <laughs> Anyways, here is the finished Lunabelle! I am so normal about my characters. So, so normal. Lunabelle makes me so normal. Comments, critiques, whatever about my art are always appreciated. But this time, especially if you have tips for rendering on Procreate, that would help me a lot. Or like, brush recommendations, I don't know. But now, let us continue on to the next redesign. The next character I am tackling is Cromwell. Another one of my baby girls, except he is baby girl in an entirely different way. A quick summary of Cromwell's character is that he is 24 years old and, like I already said, he teaches at Alriga Academy and has quite a few connections to the government in his country. He is super intelligent and he can let that and his political ranking get to his head, but he can also be a pretty sweet guy. And he's hot. Yep, uh, he's, he's hot. I created Cromwell back in April of this year, so he's probably the youngest of all of the characters in Collateral, in terms of when I made their character. And when I created Cromwell, I doodled him so much for like a month straight, but I never actually created a reference sheet for him, or a finished piece of art of him, for that matter. So instead of just completely redesigning him right now, I'm kind of just sitting down and exploring ideas for what could be finished designs. 
and also redesigning him just a little bit. I know some of y'all hate when I don't change enough about the characters in my redesign videos, and that's valid, I guess. But also, this is my channel, and I can do what I want. And what I want to do right now is Cromwell. Not in that way, but <laughs> you know. In Cromwell's old design, I only drew him as a student of Auriga Academy, but considering he's 24 years old, you know, an adult, I don't think he would be attending that school anymore. He went there, but he's graduated. His student years are over. So that means I have to give him an entirely different outfit. And instead of giving him just one new outfit, I ended up giving him two. And the two outfits I chose to design for him were his teaching uniform and then an extremely extra government-related outfit. I'm staring at the finished one right now and I just, I, I love it. I love it so much. I'm not too sure where y'all are on the speed paint, but I will say that designing his teaching uniform was so mentally taxing and I don't know why. I really intended on doing that design first, but after staring at a blank base of him for like 40 minutes, I got really impatient and I just moved on to his government uniform. So let's talk about that now. In order to fully explain this outfit, I have to give a little info dump about the world building I have going on here, so allow me to do that real quick. Basically, my story all takes place in one city, in a country, that's ruled by a theocracy. The religion that the theocracy is based on worships the sun, stars, basically anything that you can see in the sky, which is why I had the sun people versus the moth people going on in my first video. Within the actual government here, there's one guy at the top, and you can kind of think of him as like the Pope, I guess. That's the best comparison I can come up with. And then there's nine people directly below him, which are basically his council. These ten people, but especially the guy at the top, are the most powerful people in the country, and Cromwell's father is one of the people within the council. Basically, Cromwell's a Nepo baby whose parents are wealthy and in the government. And honestly, good for him. Does he deserve it? Probably not, but that's the life he was given, I guess. Anyways, with this government outfit, I really wanted it to be a stark contrast to the plainer, like, outfits of people outside the government, as well as just making it kind of look like, I don't know, something a sun religion would wear. So I took to Pinterest for ideas, and I found this costume, which, as you can tell, I took very heavy inspiration from. I couldn't find the exact origin of where this came from, but I believe it was displayed at some point in the National Center for Theatrical Costume in France, and that's the most I could gather about it. I don't know what it was originally used for, but now it's used for weird rich people and Cromwell, and lord does it look good. I feel like I need to add a little bit more color to it and change it up a little bit so it's not just me like completely copying this, but for now, this is kind of like the base design. This is, this is a concept, it's just a concept. As for his teaching outfit, like with Lunabelle, I wanted to put him in something involving pants. However, I, I don't know what it is about these two characters, but I have such a hard time designing an outfit for them that involves anything other than a skirt or a dress or just like something adjacent to it. So for his teaching uniform, I put him in a robe which is very much inspired by these like Catholic vestments. And I'm not sure what the stoles over their shoulders mean in Catholicism, but for this outfit, it may have something to do with his role in the religion and government. Or I may just make it relate to like what kind of teacher he is. I haven't really decided on it at this point. I, I think both would be good uses. And color-wise, I wanted to make it similar to her school outfit, just so there would be, you know, a cohesive palette. And also, I just, I really like the red and yellow color combination. I, I think it looks nice. It has the vibes I want. As for Cromwell's posing, after I finished the Lunabelle piece, I wished I had posed her more to show off her personality rather than her outfit. So I tried to accomplish that more with Cromwell. Even if his poses aren't super exaggerated and don't entirely show off his personality, I still think this is a step up from the very, very unnatural way I had Lunabelle standing. And one last note, you may be wondering, hey, hey Joe, what is that staff that he's holding? 
And all I have to say is you're gonna have to wait until my story releases to find out. I, I don't have enough time to explain it right now. Anyways, here is the finished Cromwell. I love my baby girl. I love that I'm drawing him again and I want to kiss him. Once again, I'm begging for rendering tips or tips about drawing faces. Let me know if you think Cromwell is hot or not. And if you do, we can fight over him and I'll put our fight in the story. I am so tired. <laughs> and with that, I am done redesigning. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I really wanted to push myself with the art that I made for this one, and while I'm not the happiest with how it came out, it's definitely a step in the right direction for where I want to be in art, and like, the kind of art that I want to make. Also, this is off topic from the main video, but I've recently felt like the art and the stuff I make for YouTube has like been limiting the growth that I want to pursue. Whether that be because I don't put that much effort into the art I make for a video, or I just get art block and I can't think of what to draw. Which is part of the reason why this video took so long to come out. I think starting in 2024, I want to prioritize making art that speaks to me, rather than stuff that just appeases the algorithm. But whatever, I'll probably talk about that in another video sooner or later. Thank you all so much for watching this video, especially if you made it this far. If you want to see more stuff from me, I have a Patreon and an Instagram you can follow. And if any sponsors are watching this, I now have a business email, which is jostaart at gmail.com. Very exciting stuff. And I think that's about all I have to say. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!